Hello beautiful souls and welcome to this reading today. In this particular reading we're going to be doing a past life reading so this won't resonate and connect for everybody. So take it as it resonates, leave what doesn't and if you're not really drawn to go any further on this reading then this isn't necessarily a reading for you. But for the, anyone who listened to the new moon reading the other day that I did, there was a really strong energetic kind of pull into one very specific um, one very specific energy around a past life connection with the divine masculine and I was guided to go deeper into that so that's what this transmission really is all about we are connecting into this really um it's like this very narrow kind of portal of energy for anyone who is connected in a past life with their divine masculine and you could resonate with this as a twin flame divine counterpart soul connection whatever is true for you and really filling into this energy of betrayal and deep mistrust for the masculine which can relate into the masculine in any capacity in this lifetime so that can relate even to your own inner masculine or any masculine in your life it could be a boss it could be a family member it could be friends it doesn't matter where that's coming from but what the energy was was this deep deep mistrust in this lifetime around the masculine and the way I was kind of guided to go into this particular reading um, I love doing past life readings so I normally connect into the person specific energy so I am going to be pulling in a collective kind of pull from past life energies going through different timelines and feeling into what we need to bring through but this will be a very, very, um, I'm going to say it's a very specific reading. So again, if it doesn't resonate for you at this time, that is totally okay as well. And is there anything else I need to say? No, I'm being told to just pull a card now. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and you don't have to have heard the new moon reading to receive this particular transmission. But if you want to go back and listen to that one, by all means, you can. And it may give you a little bit more insight into your own personal story. So what do we need to know? We're just going to open up with some energy here. What do we need to know about this past life connection that may be influencing your current life? And I am feeling as well, it's not just one past life, it is multiple. I'm feeling multiple threads into multiple timelines. So there are definitely um, soul fragments as well. That The message that I'm getting for a small group of people is that you have soul fragments that have been left behind in a past life. Again, take it as it resonates, leave what doesn't. But there are still soul fragments of your gifts, of your truth, of your power sort of held back in past life energy that you need to reclaim to bring forward into this lifetime so you can really step forward into your own energy with more clarity with more strength with more purpose i'm just gonna get one final card here and i'm gonna go through these okay so this is a very new deck for me and there is one card that i actually don't know what it means so i'm gonna grab the, the deck out the book out for this one the first two cards we have is secrecy and ritual and I don't even know how to say this word, <laughs> but the word in the book is talking about fertility. I don't know how to pronounce the word. I'm just going to call it fertility because <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this word. Um, fertility is our birthright, but a genuine understanding of fertility goes beyond having children. So, okay, I'm going to take that as the word fertility and we're going to sort of feel into the energy of the three cards together. So secrecy, ritual and this fertility card. And really what I feel like as soon as I pulled that ritual card for me was that this it was this energy of power and magic and tapping into that witch energy and that secrecy energy is hiding who you truly are. So again, we're tapping into past life energy here. So it may not resonate with you in this lifetime. You may not really go, oh, yeah, that's how I connect and feel in this lifetime. But you may feel it and go, oh, that's giving me a bit of a twinge, a bit of a soul knowing that this is from a past life for me. So take it as it connects to you and your situation and your story. But there's this energy there of with this secrecy, it's that, um, oh, I've just got another another past life thread coming through as well. With this secrecy coming through is that you had to basically live in secret, live your life in secret. And what I'm connecting to with, with a certain group of people is keeping your relationship a secret. You've had to keep your relationship a secret in past lives. And I feel like for some of you, you're also having to keep your relationship a secret in this life. So there is this kind of like energy of secrecy and it's like hiding 
yourself, hiding your magic, hiding your power, hiding the truth of who you are, maybe even hiding what you believe in this lifetime. There's a really strong energy of like keeping what you believe secret, not letting anybody know like that you're on this spiritual path or what you've uncovered or what you've awakened within or what you've kind of like tapped into or what you understand or what you believe. It's like this energy of secrecy that's coming into this lifetime is because of this past life thread that I'm feeling that you've had to keep yourself very secretive and hidden away because of persecution and judgment and this real deep energy of magic that's coming through there. The other energy that I'm feeling with this fertility card is not actually necessarily fertility. It's around um, for I feel like for some of you, for a, a, group, a small group of people again, is that it's really about this sacred prostitute energy. So for anybody who connects with the witch wound, that's one group of people. And you may also connect with the sacred prostitute wound, which is a very deep wounding around our sexual energy and our sexuality and how we um, were basically, it used to be a really potent, powerful transmutation tool is that sexual energy, that divine feminine sexual energy was a tool of transformation in past lives in like going way back into the temple sort of era of Isis, of Delphi, of um, Ishtar going all the way back into these divine goddess energies and really what I'm feeling with this is there's there's definitely two very distinct um, energies of repression that I'm feeling into is one is magic your own innate power your divine um, inner like mystical magical powers and your ability to be able to wield is the word I'm getting not weave but wield those powers wield that magic and also for anybody who is feeling and connecting into that sacred prostitute where you may have felt repression in this lifetime, that that is actually keeping you, preventing you from really being able to tap into the, the trust and the knowing in the masculine because you've been betrayed by the masculine in the past, right? There's a deep mistrust, a deep kind of, um, it's almost that there's a, there's a fear of connecting to the masculine for fear of being seen in a certain way. So again, fear of being seen in a sexual energy, um, fear of being betrayed by other women because of your sexual energy, that's definitely coming through again for a small group of people. It won't connect with everybody. But it's a very, um, there's a very sad energy as well. So picking up on a, a particular energy here, which is a very sad energy, a very isolated energy that feels like you've had to almost live the message I'm getting is three lifetimes in isolation in I want to say purgatory and it's like living these three lifetimes with no one because of the the energy that was kind of that predated these these particular lifetimes so and it feels like that is kind of coming through um like steeping into is the phrasing steeping into this lifetime is feeling like you need to kind of isolate yourself to protect yourself and even though you want the masculine energy in your life there's still this deep distrust of the masculine and your inner masculine doesn't even know how to hold you and hold you in in um in integrity whew, because of this betrayal in the past so the way I would begin to work with this energy here is to really start to feel into and connect into your own inner masculine asking how your inner masculine can hold you asking what shadows what fears what doubts that inner masculine has for you moving forward in your life but for anybody who has connected to the witch wound or the, pre the prostitute wound, there is definitely some energy, some threads that need to be cleared up there as well. So that's kind of some opening energies there. It's a big opening message. Um, I'm just filling into anything else there. Whenever I went to past life readings, which is probably why oh, I don't do collective readings uh, of past life energies, but I was just told to for this particular one is because I do feel a lot of energy when I do them and I do connect to a lot of different people's soul expression and timelines as I'm doing them. So it can be quite um, quite an intense experience and quite uh, overwhelming to, to kind of choose the, the messages I need to bring forward. So and if you've heard me do other readings before, I don't normally have to pause quite so much, but we, when I do past life readings, I really do tap into the energy so it just can take me a moment to like pause and reflect and see what else needs to come through that is going to help support the collective now in this moment. 
definitely some energy work there to be done some cord clearing some whew, it's like definitely some past life clearing needs to be done some tying up i feel like the other word i want to say is tying up loose ends of these past life kind of connections past life wounding if you haven't done sacred wound work yet it's su such an important part of our experience as well and hmm it's so repressed there's such a deep energy of repression there as well of repressing gifts repressing sexuality repressing voice i'm getting that and now my voice is going as soon as i start tapping into that energy okay what else do we need to see let's clear through that oh i might lose my voice here <clears throat> <clears throat> Oof. so for those of you who listen to the new moon reading you will have heard this me say this sort of phrasing a lot about sovereignty because we did get the excalibur coming through which is truth and this was very deeply ingrained in the new moon reading which was sovereignty and truth and action and power these are the words this was the energy we spoke about in the new moon reading and this is all coming through in one card the excalibur card so sovereignty power action and truth and then we have Guinevere, which is love, beauty, feminine power and sexuality. Everything we've just been speaking about, right? We've got power coming through twice. We have that really beautiful space of power coming through twice. We've had that energy of that sexual energy coming through, which is really beautiful. I love how a lot of this is kind of like lining up. It is time for you to reclaim your power. For me, when I'm feeling into this energy, it's less about the masculine um, energy now in this lifetime it's more about how the masculine wounding in past lives is actually impacting you standing in your own truth standing in your own power it's a real deep connection to this sexual energy as well so for anybody who does have kind of a repression in the sexual energy this is something to begin to work on do some womb clearing work do some yoni work do some shakti activation um, you may want to do some soul retrieval work within the womb space and clearing out old old um, ex-partners and things like that in the womb space. There's a lot of energy there as well. But also then like tapping back into your desire and your own innate pleasure. And But it's clearing out those cords. There is definitely an energy of clearing out the cords that are stopping you from stepping in your power fully. It's a massive message that's coming through there. So I'm going to get a couple more cards just to build on this. What else do we need to know about this past life connection? This past life energy that we're tapping into for this reading today. Oh, so we have this energy of embodiment and mission. And... I do talk about this a lot. You wanted to come through, so we're going to take you out. Um, I do talk about this a lot, that we are here for a mission. We are here for a purpose. We are here to experience our soul's highest potential in this lifetime, however that looks for each individual person. And for a lot of people, I feel like this past life this past life energy, and it really does come down to the wounding. It's less about the masculine. The, the deep mistrust in the masculine is obviously there. But it's less about that, it's more about how you've been wounded, how you're taking that wound into this lifetime, that you aren't allowing yourself to be embodied in your mission. It's like you're still ignoring the signs of your mission. You're still ignoring those, those little nudges from soul, from source, from spirit to say, like, this is what you should be doing. And I am being guided to go to the book with this one card, which is really interesting. Why am I being guided to go to the book here? Okay, so we do have the Eight of Swords energy and we've got the Ten of Wands. And for some reason, I'm being guided to go to the Eight of Swords and read from the book, which I don't normally do. Um, but I'm going to just read exactly how it says in the book. It says, surrounded by obstacles and threats on all sides, you find yourself the victim. You can't, you see no way out, no available choices. Your perceptions keep you from opening your wings and taking flight. Interesting. So really interesting that we've just been talking about your mission, right? So again, coming from that place of obstacles and threats and feeling into that place of deep wounding that could be present for you. 
What keeps you suspended here? Yourself or others? The Eight of Swords demands an answer. You cannot hang here much longer. So for some reason, that needed to be spoken exactly as it has been written, exactly as it has been worded. Um, so take that as it resonates for you and what you need to connect to in this moment for that particular energy. And then the Ten of Wands is all about that burden as well, carrying a heavy burden, either mental, physical, but I really do feel like it is a, it's a heavy past life burden. It's still playing in that mental capacity. It's like you're reliving old wounds in the mind that actually don't need to be there anymore. So again, it's this feeling of like being stuck. So these two cards both feeling stuck and blocked and that you can't actually see a clear direction on your mission and purpose. And it's because you have these old attachments to these past life woundings that are coming through here. So allow yourself to feel into that. What resonates for you? I'm just going to take a moment here to just receive this a couple of couple messages that want to come through here what are we receiving it's the most in interesting feeling because i don't only get this when i'm doing a reading but i just want to go through and it's like i want to go through and pull out cords and and do an energy clearing and do a light language activation and like clear everything out and i'm not going to do it because this is not what we're doing here today but it's this really interesting energy of like oh if only we could just clear this all out I really do feel like I need to record a past life activation, but there's a lot of sadness here as well that I'm feeling into again. And it is this sadness. I feel like that isolation that I've picked up on before. There's a lot of sadness of like, it's almost like I've missed, I've missed the off ramp of my mission. It's like, I missed my time. I missed my chance. I missed my, you know, I stopped stop listening to the guidance and I kind of just missed my chance and there's this like soul sadness there that's like how many times do we have to tell you what your soul mission is before you actually take action I know that's going to sound really harsh so please take that with as much love as it's intended and take it with you know with a grain of salt but that's kind of the how the energy it's like this sad soul energy of being you know we've been guiding you guiding you guiding you and you're still not taking that leap of faith into what we're guiding you into because you're filled with this this fear in the mind but what the fear of the mind is created from is this trauma from the past, past lives. So it's it's this kind of question of like, you can't, can't stay here forever. You need to understand. You need to know what is keeping you blocked. Go deeper. Do the work. What is keeping you blocked? Why are you allowing yourself to stay stuck here is the message. And clear up what you need to clear up to move forward. It's like there is only forward action now. You can't keep going backwards. Because I do feel like for a group of you, it's not that you're even staying stuck. It's that you're going backwards. And you can't regress energetically. But you can regress in your human life in some ways of being, you know, we can kind of go backwards of being, oh, I'm starting to step into mission. And it's like, oh, no, I'm too afraid. I'm just going to like go back to what's easy and known. Again, that won't resonate for everybody, but it will resonate with just a few of you. I'm going to pull a couple shadow cards here just to see what else is deeper here into this past life energy that we're all... Oh, I'm starting as soon as I start to tap into that past life energy there to pull this particular deck because this deck is hard enough as it is in the human aspect but when I'm feeling into that past life energy because <laughs> I'm channeling for so many people right now I nearly want to throw up it's quite intense uh, let's get a couple messages we're just going to get two cards here So we have calling the storm and bird in a cage. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Big energies, bird in a cage. And for me, when I look at this particular deck, this is all about our own shadows. So it's not about what other people have done to us or anything like that. It's always generally about what, what we are putting ourselves through. So have you kept yourself trapped in a cage? This Sorry, it's not bird in a cage, it's bride in a cage. But I just saw it as bird in a cage. I'm taking it as bird in a cage because that's how I picked up on the energy. Um, but it does say bride in a cage. But what I'm really feeling is like you're keeping yourself trapped. It's like, and maybe it is this bride in a cage as well for those of you who are connecting into this as a soul connection, divine counterpart kind of re relationship um, in whatever capacity you're feeling into is that you are kind of keeping your love in a cage. That you're keeping yourself trapped waiting waiting 
for someone to come and save you, waiting for this love to finally come in. No, you need to take yourself out of that cage and like love yourself enough first. That's this, you know, we did have this beautiful energy of Guinevere coming through in, in terms of love as well. We've had this energy of fertility. So like allow yourself to feel into that. Um, and it's like, it's like when you're in that cage, when you're trapped in that cage, it's like you're waiting for this moment. But are you going to die waiting? Are you going to die waiting for this moment to come that may never come? And again, it's a very hard energy to receive, but I know some people may, may have trouble receiving it. But again, we're looking at the shadow aspect, right? So feeling into that is, are you in a cage yourself and you've put yourself there? Are you going to die in that cage or are you going to set yourself free? Because you have the key within your hand, right? So that's really that energy that's coming through with bird in a cage or bride in a cage, whichever one you want to connect to. They're both kind of the same energy because you are keeping yourself locked down. And then we have this calling in the storm. And the beautiful thing about this particular card is it's very similar kind of imagery energy to what I was feeling when I was calling in the warrior goddess energy that I did an activation for um, recently. And we did this divine, like cutting all the cords, clearing all the attachments from this lifetime, past lives. Like we went through, it was a massive activation. This particular energy is very much sort of calling in that vibration. I can feel she was kind of the imagery that I saw just in a slightly different kind of context, but very, very strong imagery of like clearing through everything, right? Calling in that storm. And as you like call in this storm, there's, we've got to know when to stop as well, right? So one, calling in the storm means clearing away, debriding, letting go of, like allowing the storm to rip through everything that's no longer serving you, but also knowing when it's time to like allow the storm to recede. So the message I'm getting here is for, for some of you is that have you allowed yourself to stay in the storm too long? Do you need to allow the storm to recede? Or are you still sort of stuck in this kind of like stormy energy? Or do you need to allow that storm to come through and just like clear out anything in your life that is no longer serving you, right? There's, there's two um, different energies there. Anything else that's coming through with those cards? I'm feeling a lot of um, tightness and restriction in my throat. A lot of compression is the word that's coming through. Compression and restriction in the throat. Maybe the storm is also for some people, maybe it's that you've been in anger for a little while and maybe you've been using your voice in, a, in an angry way. Um, and how can you like, how can you switch that up to be more loving, more loving words is just, and that might only connect with a couple people there, but it's just a message I needed to give. Whew. It's a very, very potent energy, this one. All right, I'm just going to pull two final cards here. I'm just going to drag them two different decks. Oh, I love this. So... We have these two beautiful final cards to finish off with. One of them is power. And we've had that power energy coming through a number of times in this reading and a number of times in the new moon reading. For those of you who listen to the new moon reading, it is your time to take your power back. It is your time to step into your power. It is your time to be the sovereign. It is your time to like wield your magic and power. The other card that's come through, this is the final card of the reading is union. So when you can clear out, right? So union comes for those of you who are like waiting for union. And I want to say that you can't wait for union, right? We can't wait for union. We can't just sit here and hope it comes one day. We need to do our own inner work, inner practice, inner journeying to make space for union to be present. And that means releasing yourself from the cage. That means making a decision, understanding why you are kind of on pause, what burdens you're carrying, like going back and reflecting on all the energy we've spoken about. What is your mission? If you're not living your mission, 
that could be part of the reason why you don't have union. If you're not in your own sacred masculine, your own inner masculine energy or own inner feminine energy, if you're masculine listening to this reading, but if you're not in your the energy of balance in that inner union, how can you possibly experience outer union as well? But what I'm really feeling is that union comes. There's a, there's a song that I'm hearing and I don't know where it, like what it is. What is that song? I feel like it's Frozen from Madonna. God, I haven't heard that song in years, but I'm just hearing this line of something happens, like something comes when you learn to let go. And I see her in this like incredible, I'm seeing her imagery which is also very, very similar to um, the imagery in one of these cards here. But it's basically that this union energy comes in when you learn to let go, when you learn to let go of the, the attachment, the need for it, and you learn to step into your own power, your own innate magic, right? So these are the energies that are coming through here. Really, really interesting reading, but I do feel for... For a group of people, it's like if you can do this, if you can live mission, if you can live your purpose, if you can step all the way into your power and sovereignty, union is like a breath away. That's the message I'm receiving is union is just a breath away. But in order for that to come in, you need to take action yourself. You can't just wait in the cage. Right. So that's a, a big kind of like final closing message there. So I hope that this reading resonates with at least some of you, because I know it's very it's a very interesting reading. And it's a very, um, as I said at the beginning, I think it's a very narrow reading. But I was just guided to go into this a little bit deeper for anybody who was going to connect with it. And because it is a past life reading, it won't definitely resonate with everybody because we're not tuning into the current collective. I'm tuning into multiple timelines and lifetimes, and it's a it's a very different kind of energy to navigate in the collective. So, um, my first time doing a collective past life reading like this, it's a it's a very very interesting energy for me to tap into. I love doing the one on ones, but um, I've never done a collective like this. So, absolutely love it. Um, but I hope that this has um, resonated. If you are wanting to do any of the activations I've spoken about in this reading, some of them will be listed below. I may even create a past life activation because I do feel like that's something being guided there. But the warrior goddess for clearing cords is really powerful and potent if you want to do that. There is a witch wound activation, which I created. It's probably one of the most potent activations I've ever created. And it really is a deep kind of debriding and reactivation remembrance of who you are as a witch and tapping back into that energy mm. I know for some of you that is definitely like the calling that's the energy that's calling is this witch wound activation Whew. just receiving some extra messages there as well um, and if you do want to book a one-on-one -on -one, by all means feel free to do that all the links are below but otherwise, I will connect with you all again really soon, beautiful souls. Sending you so much divine love. Much love.